Okay, I guess climate's really important because it's a big issue globally. And it's one of these issues that goes across the traditional disciplines. So we need to organise our research in such a way that we harness uh, expertise across a lot of different, uh, different areas, just different disciplines. Uh, so, for example, we need to include meteorologists, um, geologists, earth scientists, biologists, um, but also engineers and social scientists. So it goes across the traditional areas. And that's one of the values of the Earth Institute. It enables us to bring people together um, into a group to discuss these issues and to see ways of solving problems, writing research proposals that um, come at these problems from a sort of multidisciplinary approach. So um, in terms of the importance of climate change, of course, it's probably the most important issue that humanity is facing at, at present. Um, and it impacts on a whole range of human activities, societal um, issues, economic activities, etc. Okay, so international shifts in climate um, affect a number of different aspects of the climate system. So we're all familiar with, for example, the atmosphere is getting warmer. Uh, but that's already only part of the story because we know that, for example, the oceans are taking up huge amounts of heat at the moment. And basically the system is adjusting um, to this change. And we're just really beginning to see some of the impacts at the moment. Um, so internationally we're seeing things like sea level rise, for example, uh, conditions getting warmer, we're seeing the Arctic region particularly being affected. Um, temperatures in the Arctic are increasing by perhaps 10 times faster rates than in other regions, so those areas are really being affected very badly. Um, so we're seeing, for example, um, a change in the sea ice distribution uh, with time. And every year we see um, the minimum level of sea ice decreasing. Um, so globally there's a lot of different indicators. Um, also the oceans are becoming more acidic um, because there's higher levels of CO2 in the atmosphere that's been dissolved in the oceans and so we get more carbonic acid formation, more, more acidity. Um, in terms of the impact on Ireland, um, it's a bit more difficult to say exactly what, what that would be. Uh, we know, for example, that we're going to be affected by sea level rise. That's one of the sort of most immediate and clearest impacts. Um, we also know that we're likely to be hit by more frequent extreme events, more frequent storms, for example, more frequent floods. Um, the climate system is simply be becoming more energetic. There's more energy in the system. Um, a warmer atmosphere can hold more moisture, so we get more precipitation, more, more extreme events. In terms of the regional effect, uh, in the case of Ireland, um, regional effects are a bit more difficult to determine. Um, people try to address this by looking at climate models and downscaling big climate models to the smaller scale, to the regional scale. Um, those results are still coming in, but the suggestion is that winters will get wetter and summers will get drier, particularly in the east of the country. So we will see regional scale effects, but the uncertainties associated with those effects on the scale of Ireland are still rather uncertain, and people are still working on those kind of issues. Okay, well, there's a very wide range of um, topics. Um, they range really from the fundamental science of how the climate system works, uh, improving climate models, in other words, the basic sort of physics and chemistry of the atmosphere, uh, physics of the oceans, how heat's transported around the system. Uh, so basically refining our understanding of the the climate system itself. It's a very complex system with lots of feedbacks and many of those feedbacks are non-linear and not very well understood. Um, so at the scientific level there's a lot of pure or blue skies research going on um, and that involves meteorologists, geologists, geophysicists, uh, earth scientists. Uh, then people are looking at the impacts of climate change on say the biosphere. So a lot of biologists for example are looking at impacts on things like crops, um, on um, ecology, on animal populations, things like extinctions, um, these kind of issues. So that's to do with the impacts. And then finally we have um, a group of people looking at how best to mitigate um, against climate change. Um, what can we do, for example, to reduce emissions in the future? Um, what behavioural change we need as you know, at a society level to try to 
um, minimize CO2 in the atmosphere um, and to minimize emissions. And that involves, for example, policy, um, policy changes, perhaps, um, looking at what kind of policies, for example, to do with energy policy, might impact on emissions in the future by changing people's behavior and essentially incentivizing um, behavior that will minimize emissions in the future. So that's to do with policy. So really then we involve, um, the Earth Institute involves um, kind of traditional pure science, as it were, or blue skies research through the more applied aspects, uh, through the, the policy, social science side of things. So it's very, very broad, very wide encompassing. Um, I guess the biggest hurdles in terms of the uh, climate theme and the Earth Institute, the biggest hurdle I think is to try to get projects of a scale that can pull together all of these people. Um, traditionally we all work on, on a smaller scale, on our own projects, and I think there are opportunities now, for example, in Horizon 2020, to try to get projects big enough to, you know, basically bring together um, scientists, soci social scientists, engineers, to try to get big scale projects where we can get all these people working together. and. Getting that organised is, is, is a big challenge, I think, for, for me and for others, uh, you know, working in, in, in these institutes. Um, but I think there are big opportunities there as well. Yeah, I mean, it certainly affected my, my research. Um, at one level, it allows me to talk to people, access, um, just have general better access to people across the university. Um, that's what, at one level. Um, I, I now find myself uh, talking to you know, scientists and um, engineers and social scientists that I wouldn't otherwise meet or, or get a chance to interact with. So that's all great. Um, at a practical level, in terms of my own research, I've had quite a bit of support on the computational side. Um, I'm now dealing with uh, fairly large data sets, which I hadn't dealt with before. So it's new kind of research for me. And um, I get quite a bit of computational support looking at these big data sets and organizing big data trying to interrogate big data sets uh, from the computational support in the Institute. So there are supports that are available that would not be available within a school, for example, and that's one of the values of, of the Institute. Uh, the biggest risk factor, I think, is complacency, that we don't actually do anything. If we just allow things to carry on as they are and ignore the problem, it'll get worse and worse, and ultimately the financial cost and the sort of pain involved in, in fixing the problem will be greater. So the, the biggest risk is, is just to ignore it. And I think we all have a job, and the Earth Institute has a role here to play in terms of education. Um, education not just of our own uh, students, undergrads and postgrads and so on, but also the wider population. So outreach is important as well, to try to um, communicate the science better. The science is very clear now. We know that the climate is changing, we know that humans are responsible, that's all very clear. What's not so clear um, is the communication, and the communication needs to be better. So that's one of the sort of challenges that, that faces at the moment.